AMD has decided that it wants to compare itself to NVIDIA. Witcher 3 Next Gen Update is on its way, and we have our first RTX 4080 review. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Kyler, can I get a ha yeah? Ha yeah! There we go. So let's dive right on into it, because AMD wants to get ahead of the RTX 4080 launch that is likely happening today. Reviewers more than likely are coming out with their first dedicated reviews on these GPUs. And so AMD put forth a whole slew of details with regards to their RDNA 3 GPUs that they want you to consider before you even look at the RTX 4080. We've got things like it doesn't have any of AMD's other things, but it it does compare worse in GDDR6 memory, worse in memory bus width, and total board power seems to be between the 7900 XT and XTX. And don't forget that it's only gonna be available for $999 as opposed to the $1,200. You just have to wait a month or so, okay? If you can wait a month or so, AMD is trying to convince you that they are the better choice. Also coming out and showing their PCB, highlighting all of the features, such as the IO connections, the power phases that it has and how that's better than the RTX 4080. Also showing that, yes, it has regular power plugs compared to the RTX 4080's 12 plus four pin and that they are slimmer coming in at two and a half slot size, whereas the RTX 4080 is gonna be triple slot. And if you don't believe them that it's faster, just look at the fact that it has 54 gigabits per second of max display port bandwidth capable of 8k 165 and 4k 480 whereas the 4080 can only do 8k 60 and 4k 300 hertz kylie can you believe that the rtx 4080 can't do 4k 360 hertz you sound like a huge nerd over there that's a lot of numbers the only thing amd is not comparing themselves in is the actual gaming performance because they don't have an rtx 4080 to actually showcase so they're just showing that they are faster than their previous generation of cards 7900 xt and 7900 xtx beating out the 6950 xt which both of these cards cost less than the 6950 xt debuted for which was the 1099 dollar price point so amd trying to make a case for itself when it comes to comparing to the rtx 4080 because that news is about to flood your feed they want you to know hey don't forget about us. We're not ready yet, but we will be eventually. But AMD also had a RDNA 3 showcase where they detailed a whole lot of stuff to members of the press. Not quite this retail, hey, buy us thing, but more on the side of, hey, look at our fancy features like Infinity Links, which can operate at 9.2 gigabits per second, which is 10 times what it can do on a Ryzen chip, which allows it to get the peak bandwidth of 5.3 terabytes per second. This, however, comes at the cost of latency on their GPUs, and so they've tried to address that by increasing clock speeds by 43%, which allows it to have roughly 10% lower latency than the previous setup because they've also changed a few things in the clocks, not just in how they operate on the Infinity Link and how they put it on the chiplet for the MCD as opposed to the GCD and AMD justifying their existence of chiplets by talking about how pricing is going up because of the new advanced nodes and chiplets allow them to actually be more cost effective because the advanced nodes can be used for the GPU performance and then the majority sure nodes can be used for other things. So AMD coming out and justifying its existence saying, hey, don't forget about me. Don't you forget about me. It's a be breakfast club situation. But in case you want a third party card of the RX 7900 XTX, Power Color showing off one of theirs, the Hellhound being debuted right here. Take note, still has those original two plus eight pin power connectors. Which company, if you are considering the RX 7900 series GPUs, which company are you most hotly anticipating releasing their card? Let me know down below in the comments. And we're gonna let you know about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by our Zopa and their G1 game portable gaming monitor. My friends, this is a 15 15.6 inch gaming monitor for you to go on the go with. Not only can it do up to 144 hertz on the 1080p display, but it can also be connected to a wide variety of devices, whether it connects via HDMI to your PC or to various game consoles, which allow you to get that higher refresh rate, or you can even connect it via USB-C in case you don't wanna have to carry around two different cables. This thing has a lot of functionality that it can bring to the table and make it so that you're enjoying your video games on the go in the best way possible, and you can even connect it to your Steam Deck. But the G1 is only 0.3 inches thick and weighs only 1.36 pounds, which is perfect for carrying around. It also has built-in dual speakers so that you don't need to carry a headset around with you. And the G1's custom leather cover allows it to double as a stand, which is how I'm actually propping it up right now as we're filming this. It's a very versatile, slim, sleek package that can do a whole lot. And if 15.6 inches isn't big enough for you, especially while you're on the go, next month our Zopa is going to be launching their 17 
17.3 inch G1 Max, so you can stay tuned for that. But if you're interested in a portable gaming monitor, our Zopa has the G1 available for you at the link in the video description. Be sure to check them out down there. Big thanks again to Arzopa for sponsoring today's video. Check out the G1 at the link down below. And we're gonna let you know more about crypto stocks, Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, good job making the noise. Bitcoin down just ever so slightly to be down 1.34%. It's kind of had a rough ride. Again, the FTX debacle that's going on, crypto.com issues happening. Bitcoin's a little, it's a little tender right now. Don't poke it where it hurts. Ethereum down also just roughly 1% to be at 1213. Dogecoin down roughly one and a half percent to be at 8.4 cents. Kyler, do you have a message for Reese? Reese, you're doing great, bud. Give us the UFD deals. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals. We bring you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. We got a whole selection of Samsung storage deals today, starting with the Samsung T7. This one terabyte portable external SSD is currently going for $89.99, which is 36% off or a whole $50. And on the internal front, we have the Samsung 980 Pro. This two terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD is currently going for $179.99, which is a whole 53% off or $200 off. And on the audio front, we have the legendary Shure SM7B dynamic microphone. I use one of these for years in the studio and you can find it in practically every podcast or streamer setup these days. It's currently going for only $359, which is a whole $140 off or 28% off. And like always, you can find the deals for these and more linked in the video description. And with that, back to the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Wow, great deals, Reese. And you know what else is a great deal for me? It's a big deal. It's a monumental steal. It's the fact that The Witcher 3 is getting a next gen update and it's been officially confirmed as far as a release date. This is something they've been teasing for over a year. And now we know that it's actually going to be coming out on December 14th for free for everybody who owns the game on a next gen system or a PC, because that's where it's also getting the free update. There will be a physical edition of this next gen update coming out at a later date, and it will also include the Netflix Witcher pack skins so that you can play as Henry Cavill and not just have to be the regular Geralt of Rivia. Don't you want to be part of Henry Cavill? be the guy that had the CGI mustache removed. Well, that would be great. Somebody make a mod with Henry Cavill as Superman in The Witcher with a CGI mustache removal. That's exactly what I said, yes. That's what he wants. Give the man what he's asking for. Nvidia is giving us more details on their 12V horsepower connectors and some of the minutia of what actually might be causing the melting that we're seeing on GPUs. And again, this is coming at the hands of Igor's lab who has been at the forefront of finding out all of these details of the 12V horsepower connector and what's going on. And it turns out that Nvidia is confirming that there are two different manufacturers for these connectors and they have some small differences that do turn out to make significant differences when it's actually coming to connecting them on the GPU. They have the same tulip design but the NTK connector versus the Astron connector requires more press and force which likely would mean that the Astron connectors weren't actually getting inserted all the way and it also appears that the Astron connectors have lower durability and a higher resistance than the NTK cables which could mean that they're having more troubles and could potentially be causing the melting. Again this is not confirmed at the moment but it does seem to all boil down to whether or not you have these cables firmly pressed in and inserted and certain cables are going to be fully pressed in a bit more easier than others and might last longer over some connections and disconnections. We'll have to wait for more of Nvidia's firm confirmations on these, but it does appear that somebody's at least trying to get to the bottom of this and somebody got to the front of the RTX 4080 review cycle. This is likely all over your feed. More reviewers likely have this. Uh, November 15th makes sense as to when these reviews are gonna come out, especially with the card releasing on Wednesday the 16th, but it turns out in the first review it, uh, over on Billy Billy, it does appear that the 4080 is quite the contender compared to the 3090 Ti being about 19 to 23% faster than that and being about 21 to 23% slower than the RTX 4090, which then does put it firm in the RX 7900 XTX competition category just for a few hundred dollars more. But that's essentially the review coming out. You can check it out at the link in the video description. But one of the key takeaways from that is that these GPUs do appear to be pretty power efficient and that you could even drop the board power down to around 260 watts and get very little performance impact, which would allow you to run the GPUs cooler and make it so that the fans don't have to spin up as much and potentially give it a longer lifespan. But showing that the RTX 4080, even if it's only coming in at 320 watts of total power consumption, it could potentially be lowered and made a little bit easier for you and your system and your power draw. Let me know after
after you've watched some RTX 4080 reviews. Is this a card you're considering or is it just off your radar? You're gonna wait for AMD to release their thing on December 13th. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments and you're not gonna hear from me today until tomorrow because hot news comes once a day.